Hey guys, Joe with Driven Films here, and in this in-depth camera review, we're gonna show you why we love filming cars so much on the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema 4K. Stay tuned. Welcome to our review of the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema 4K camera. In this review, we're gonna tell you why we love filming cars so much on the Pocket 4K. But before we begin, I'd like to ask if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. We've got a lot more tutorials and a lot more reviews coming up and you don't wanna miss them. So now on to the camera. We've been using the Pocket 4K for just about a year now. We love this camera so much that we've actually picked up a second one. We've been using it on all of our automotive shoots and we can safely say, that this is one hell of a camera. So in case you didn't already know, Driven Films is a video production company specializing in the automotive industry. We shoot a lot of different projects, including vehicle showcases, shop videos, product videos. We shoot a lot of interviews as well. We shoot a lot of car shows and races. So what that means is we use the Pocket 4K in several different scenarios. Oftentimes we use it on a shoulder rig or a handheld rig. We also use it on tripod like you see here. We shoot a lot of interview style footage with it. And we also use it on a gimbal, whether it's a handheld gimbal or we actually put it on the car rig. All right, so what we do not use this camera for, and honestly, what it's not even made for is vlogging. It doesn't have a cool flip out screen. It doesn't have great autofocus. And to be honest with you, it has horrendous battery life. We're gonna touch on all that a little more later, but I want you to keep in mind that this camera is not for vlogging. That's not to say you can't use it for vlogging, but keep in mind, this camera was made for filmmakers who want an entry level cinema camera. And it achieves exactly that. And that is exactly why we love this thing. So with all that being said, let's dive a little deeper into the camera. All right, so now on to resolutions. So this is the Pocket 4K, which means it shoots 4K DCI, 4K 241, 4K Ultra HD, but it also shoots 2.8K anamorphic, 2.6K 16 by nine, as well as 1080p. Shooting all those resolutions, it becomes an incredible value. We're gonna be talking about the value of this camera quite a bit throughout the review, but at $1,300, shooting all those resolutions, especially 2.8K anamorphic, there aren't many cameras out there that can match that. So we talked about resolution, let's talk about the frame rates we could shoot at. At all the standard resolutions, you could shoot at 2397, 24, 30, up to 60 frames per second. One feature we love about the Pocket 4K is something called off-speed recording. If you come from a GH5 or a GH5S, you're familiar with variable frame rate, and that's essentially what off-speed recording is. It's also known as high frame rate on this camera. Now, I don't know why they called it two different things. There's actually an HFR high frame rate button on the camera, and then within the menu, it actually says off speed recording. That can be a little confusing, but they are the same exact thing. Now, what off speed recording does is it bakes slow motion into your footage. It also allows you to capture a time lapse. Now, speaking of time lapses, the Pocket 4K has a handy time lapse mode that produces great results. So for example, at 2.8K anamorphic, you could turn on off-speed recording and shoot up to 80 FPS. And at 4K 241, you could turn on off-speed recording and shoot up to 75 FPS. That makes this camera extremely versatile. You could shoot, again, up to 120 FPS. That's pretty amazing. Okay, so now onto the codex that this camera can shoot at. Not only can the Pocket 4K shoot ProRes, but it can also shoot RAW internally. Now, I say internally because that means it does not need an external recorder to shoot RAW. Now, that is something we got extremely excited about when this camera was first announced, despite the fact that it was Cinema DNG. But shortly before we actually purchased the camera, Blackmagic released a free firmware update, which rolled out their own flavor of RAW called Blackmagic RAW. Now, to be honest with you, we rarely shoot ProRes on this camera. As nice as ProRes is, especially the 10-bit, we primarily shoot Blackmagic RAW. Now, the benefit of that is we are actually shooting at high resolutions, high frame rates, and we end up with very high quality files at very lightweight file sizes. 
when we shoot ProRes, we shoot for a whole day, we could end up filling one to two, one terabyte SSDs per camera. So now that also helps our workflow when it comes from going from the camera to the computer. Now what we do is when we get back from a shoot, we take the SSD off the camera, we plug it into the computer, and we transfer all the footage to our NAS server as well as the computer's local drives. So what that does is it gives us a backup and it gets us to work right away. We don't have to create proxies because Blackmagic RAW is so lightweight, whereas with ProRes we'd have to create proxy files and even more so if we were shooting H.264, which is a very compressed format. So all in all, we absolutely love the fact that the Blackmagic Pocket 4K shoots RAW internally. Again, we don't really shoot ProRes, but even if we did, the fact that it's there is amazing. So now we're gonna talk about dynamic range and why it's important to us filmmakers. What dynamic range does is it allows us to capture high contrast scenes without over or underexposing the shot. Highlights and shadows are protected much more so than a camera with lower dynamic range. Now the Pocket 4K has 13 stops of dynamic range. This allows us to have some flexibility where if we overexpose a shot in post, we could bring the highlights back and we could bring some of the details back if we didn't expose the shot properly. A good example of this is we shoot a lot of run and gun style footage, especially at races, drag races even more so than anything. Again, we're shooting run and gun style footage where we may be filming a, a crew, a pit crew working on their car, repairing and changing a tire or something, and then we need to immediately pan over and, and run to the starting line and capture a race, and those cars take off lightning fast. A drag race can be over in a matter of five, six seconds or even more sometimes. So we need to be able to capture that shot real quickly. Now that being said, if we're capturing a shot over here, we have to quickly pan over and we don't always have time to perfectly expose our shot. We don't have great cards. We aren't running around with a color checker and you know, again, run and gun style footage. Here, the sky is a little overexposed, but we bring it into resolve. We start grading and thanks to the 13 stops of dynamic range, we could bring back some of the details that we lost in the shot. The same goes for shadows. If we underexpose to a certain extent, we could bring back the details in the shadows. So now how does the Blackmagic Pocket 4K hold up against true cinema cameras when it comes to dynamic range? The Sony FS7, which has 14 stops of dynamic range, which is only one more stop than the Pocket 4K. Then we have what I consider the Pocket 4K's big brother, the Ursa Mini Pro G2, that actually has 15 stops. Now at 16 and a half stops is the Red Gemini. So at a fraction of the cost of those cinema cameras, the Pocket 4K is really holding its own when it comes to dynamic range. One of the most important and unfortunately often overlooked aspects of filmmaking is capturing high quality audio. Luckily, the Pocket 4K has professional level audio inputs. On the side of the camera, we have a three and a half millimeter audio input jack. It also has two surprisingly high quality internal front speakers. Now these speakers can be split off into two separate channels. One thing that stands out on this camera is the fact that it has mini XLR input with 48 volt phantom power. What that means is you can plug in an XLR microphone directly to the camera with phantom power going out to the microphone but you can also run a shotgun mic on top into the three and a half and you can split those channels independently. But what that means is we've always got a backup. We have one channel for the wireless lav and we have another channel for whatever mic we're using as a backup. So here we are, we're gonna talk about the one thing that people absolutely hate about this camera and rightfully so, and that's the battery life. The battery life on the Pocket 4K is absolutely horrendous. You're lucky if the battery lasts you 30 minutes. Blackmagic actually chose to go with LPE6 batteries. Now, if you come from a Canon background, you've probably got dozens of these lying around and battery life is probably not an issue for you because you can just swap them in and out. Blackmagic did come out with a battery grip which essentially adds a second LPE6 battery. I'm gonna put a link to that product in the description. However, the way we power this camera is either we use a core SWX power base or another V-mount battery solution, especially when using our handheld and our shoulder rig, or in a case where we're using a gimbal setup, for instance, the DJI Ronin-S or the Freefly Mobi Pro, 
we always power the camera via the gimbal. So power isn't too much of an issue for us depending on how we're using the camera. It's very rare that we actually hold the camera without a cage and without a battery solution. So now is the battery life on the Pocket 4K a deal killer? I don't think so, primarily because of the way we use it and the way most people do use it. If you are a filmmaker and you are a cinematographer, you are already using some form of rig, some form of cage, and you do already have some V-mount batteries laying around or some other battery solution. And again, I'm gonna put a link to the products that I mentioned in the description so you can pick them up if you want. So one important feature I wanna to touch on in terms of battery life is you could actually power the camera and charge the battery via the USB-C cable. Now, unfortunately, when you do that, you do lose the ability to record to an external SSD. That's something we're gonna to touch on a little later. One thing Blackmagic is known for is their amazing user interface design. We've used the Blackmagic Ursa Mini, we've used their Video Assist, and we've always been delighted by their user interfaces. Now, lucky for us, the user interface carried over to the Pocket 4K. So for those of you who come from a Sony background, you're probably used to digging for settings and maybe even sometimes getting lost. There is none of that with the Pocket 4K. Every single setting, every single menu feature is easy to find and easy to change. One of our favorite features of the Pocket 4K is its ability to control the camera via a Bluetooth app. Now, Blackmagic has released a free Bluetooth app for your phone or your tablet. It's iOS and Android. So with the app, you can control basic functions like start, stop recording. You can change your ISO, aperture, shutter speed. You can even pull focus depending on what lens you're using. We find that to be very useful, especially since we film a lot of car rig shots, which means we do not have access to the camera at all times. We don't have time to pull over and start, stop recording. So having the ability to control the camera remotely is essential. So if you're filming a lot of car rig shots or if you're using a jib or anything where you need to control the camera remotely, we definitely recommend you check the app out. So now we're gonna talk about low light performance of the Pocket 4K. We've used the Pocket 4K in low light situations several times and we're pleasantly surprised with its performance. The Pocket 4K has dual gain ISO, which gives us exceptional low light performance. The native ISO levels are 400 and 3200. When we're filming night scenes, we often like to shoot at 3200 ISO, which is the beginning of the second bracket. Now, if we need more light, we'll adjust depending on what we have, but we always try to target 3200 ISO. Now, when we're filming daylight scenes or studio stuff, we'll shoot at 400. One thing we do love is the fact that the camera shoots surprisingly in low noise images at 3200 ISO. Now we filmed the entire AmeriCat showcase video, which you can see via the link in the description. We filmed that entire video with the Pocket 4K and we had a lot of night scenes where we had some very, very low light situations. Now, luckily his car is white and he does have some really cool lighting on the car, which did add some of its own lighting, but oftentimes the only lights we had was maybe a street light as we passed by or maybe a car behind us. So we were very surprised and, and very happy with how the camera performed when it comes to low light situations. Now, is this a juggernaut when it comes to low light? No, but it is pretty damn good. So now we're gonna talk about the body of the camera. Now, we need to keep in mind that this is a $1,300 camera. Yes, the body is plastic, and yes, it does have some cheap elements like these rubber doors here. Now, the buttons on the camera do feel a little mushy. However, when you do press the button, it does feel stable. There is a tactile response. You know when you hit the button. The record button feels nice. You know when you've hit it. You know when you're recording. There are three really nice customizable function buttons here. There are three of them. For example, we map the first one to false color, the second one to focus assist. It toggles it on and off. And then the third one we map to a set ISO level of 3200. This way, when we're filming in low light situations, we could turn it on or off. We're not fumbling through our menu settings. We're not adjusting parameters. We're just quickly hitting a button. Boom, we're ready to go for low light. Touching on the size and ergonomics of the camera, it is a very wide camera, but it's not so big that you can't just toss it in your camera bag as it is here, but it does feel a little awkward in the hands if you're used to something smaller like a GH5 or a Sony a7S II. 
the camera does feel a little big, but it is very lightweight. How wide the camera is, that did pose a problem when it comes to mounting on certain gimbals. We actually tried to mount this on our Ronin MX gimbal and it would not fit at all. It would not pass through the cage because the camera was too wide. Now, at first, we actually thought that the camera was too wide for our Ronin S as well, but luckily there is a third-party mounting plate. It is an offset plate by a land part. We'll put a product link in the description. Now, that actually allows you to mount it on something like the Ronin S. Now, on our other gimbal, the Freefly Moby Pro, we were able to mount the Pocket 4K just quickly and easily. There were no modifications needed, no third-party accessories. The camera is mounted up and balanced quickly and ready to go. So now we're gonna move on to the screen in the back. The screen is gigantic. And no, it does not flip out, sorry vloggers. However, there is a third party accessory or a modification kit from Tilta. And again, I'm gonna put the product link in the description where you could actually modify the camera and flip it out. So that's not something that we need or want to do. I do believe it would void the warranty on the camera, but that is an option for someone who does need a flip out screen. On top of the camera, there is a standard quarter 20 mount. There is no hot shoe on this camera, and that is not too big of a deal because you could actually pick one up from Small Rig. I'm gonna put a link in the description to that product, but what that allows you to do is you could actually mount a monitor arm, or if you're using a cage, that is a second mounting point for the cage. Then on the bottom, there is a standard quarter 20 mount. But overall, the camera body has a very nice build. It's Again, plasticky, but it's not so cheap to the point where you're wondering what is this garbage? Again, it's a $1,300 camera and it feels like a $1,300 camera, but it performs much more than that. So now we're gonna talk about recording media. The Pocket 4K gives you three different options for recording media. You can of course go with the standard SD card. When it comes to SD cards, we prefer using Angelbird AV Pro cards. We're gonna put a link in the description of those products if you wanna check them out. You can also use CFast cards. Now I'm going to admit, because of how expensive they are, we chose not to go with CFast cards. Now it didn't really matter too much considering the fact that we did choose to go with the third option, which is external SSDs. You can record on the Pocket 4K via external SSD by plugging into the USB-C port. When it comes to SSDs, we film on Samsung T5 SSDs. They're fairly cheap, lightweight, and very small, and very reliable. There are several options you could choose from. We mentioned the Samsung T5, but there also is a drive from Wise. There's another drive from G Technology, which we love, and you could also use an Angelbird drive. So one benefit to recording to an external SSD is the fact that we could edit on the go if we needed to. So once we're done with the shoot, we unplug the SSD from the camera, plug it into our laptop via USB-C, and we begin editing immediately. That creates a, you know, a pretty nice speedy workflow. There are no loading up SD, multiple SD cards. We don't have to put them in card readers. We just plug them straight into the computer and offload media. Or again, like I said, we will edit on the go from those SSDs. Now Blackmagic does have a list of recommended media. I'm gonna put a link to that in the description. This way, if you do need to pick up some media for the camera, you are picking up media that does work for the Blackmagic Pocket 4K and you're not picking up something that will drop frames and not record properly. So finally we get to something that we've been talking about the entire review and that's the value of the Pocket 4K. As a small business, cost is extremely important to us. That being said, many filmmakers have called this camera a poor man's red, and rightfully so. All the features we've talked about, and then some, are features that you would not find on a standard camera, especially at $1,300. You get 4K, you get up to 120 FPS, you get anamorphic, you get multiple recording media options, you get a micro four thirds mount, you get professional level audio. You get a gigantic screen, an amazing user interface, and quite frankly, probably the best bang for the buck when it comes to cameras in the past 10 years. Adding on to the value of the Pocket 4K is the fact that you get a free copy of Blackmagic DaVinci Resolve Studio. 
That is their professional industry standard color grading software, which also has Fairlight built in as well as a very nice robust editing feature. So wrapping up the value, if you're on a budget and if you need even multiple cameras at $1,300, you cannot beat this camera. I don't believe there is a single camera on the market at $1,300 that has the features and the quality of the Pocket 4K. So that wraps it up for our review on the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema 4K camera. If you enjoyed the review, please hit the like button. And of course, please subscribe to our channel so that we know you want to see more content like this. And above all, we actually really want to hear from you. So please drop us a comment below and let us know what you want to see more of. Let us know what camera you'd like to see us review next. Until then, we'll see you next time.